Thank you very much. Uh, good morning again. Uh, my presentation will be about a case study of our knowledge management implementation in Chess Group. Uh, as this whole week is about sharing the knowledge, so I would like to share my experience or our experience from the knowledge management implementation and even to show you something about the lessons learned. It means all those bright and dark sides of every implementation. So, agenda. It is my pointer. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> Strange. Oscar. Dobrica, what did you do with my pointer? <laughs> okay, no problem. I will uh, operate it. Yeah. Oh, my presentation is frozen. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. So just uh, briefly about the agenda of my presentation. At the very beginning, I would like to introduce, just in one slide, my company. Uh, then I would like to show you how the knowledge management model in our company looks like. And uh, some more words and um, explanations about KM process status in our company until now. Uh, then nuclear knowledge loss risk management in uh, chess nuclear power plants, lessons learned and closing. Uh, this first slide shows uh, more details about a uh, chess group. As you see, uh, our company, uh, which is situated in the middle of Europe, in the heart of Europe, has some business and power activities in other countries like Germany, like uh, Hungary, Bulgaria, and others. Even in Turkey, we have sales and uh, power activities. Uh, Chess is quite big. Well, the country is small, but the company is big. It has more than 25,000 employees. Uh, which is, in our conditions, a very big company. It is not comparable, of course, with Rosatom, with its thousands and thousands of employees around the world. And we belong, I'm quite, to, I'm quite proud to say that we, our uh, energetic uh, power and our business uh, results uh, belong to the top 10 uh, European energetics. Uh, we operate about 34 uh, what we call classical power plants like hydro and coal, renewable resources, and two power plants, as I mentioned uh, on Wednesday while presenting our KPIs. Larry Prusak, if you remember him, and I'm sure you do, uh, recommended uh, storytelling. You remember? So I decided to. Uh, to provide you uh, all those information like a, let's say, fairy tale. And every fairy tale should, <laughs> should have a good, uh, good uh, finish or a good uh, ending. But I don't know, because implementation never ends. So once upon the time in the middle kingdom of Czechia, <laughs> not Chechnya, Czechia, <laughs> we're operating two power plants named Temelin and Dukovany, smoothly and quietly producing energy by splitting the atom. And in 2008, one woman sitting in Prague, the capital, in the headquarters, uh, with basic nuclear education, was appointed to implement knowledge management in both those NPPs. So do you think it was a good starting position? Headquarters, capital, women, nuclears, more or less. OK. So uh, of course, uh, it was me, you probably <laughs> realized. And I had a team responsible for knowledge management implementation uh, in a pilot project in Tamalin uh, and PP. So we came to the company. And in the very beginning, uh, believe me, we had quite a hard time. As uh, everybody says, knowledge management. At first, they are quite allergic for the English English uh, vocabulary. So we need to use reasoning, uh, znalosti in Czech language, not to tease them from the very beginning. And they said, all those line managers said, that's what we do years and years. 
We just don't call it knowledge management. Of course they did, probably, but it was not systematic. It was not somehow reported. Nobody knows what's one department on maintenance doing regarding keeping and sharing the knowledge, comparing with reactor physics, etc. cetera. Uh, another problem was that uh, the people were quite scared or afraid to share the knowledge. I mean, the deep expertise, big expertise. Uh, they were scared because, uh, first, they considered all those wisdom as their own property. And on the other hand, they were a little bit afraid that they will uh, preserve and share the knowledge within the company, and then they will be hired. So we had to overcome a lot of problems of this kind. And uh, slowly, slowly, during the pilot project, by support of our board, not just top managers, but board, and by support of a very famous uh, consultant, uh, consulting company, BCG, Boston Consulting, if you know them. Uh, we started the pilot implementation in a nuclear NPP in 2008, and then in Dukovany, which is uh, older. So uh, it's obvious that we, uh, regarding knowledge management, have to solve different problems in younger one and the NPP, which is currently an LTO program. It means long-term operation, asking for new license, etc. As I already mentioned, uh, and you heard it already three times, I, I have counted that, that uh, the knowledge management is basically the system which allows you to have the right knowledge in the right place in the right time. And in nuclear business, it is really very important because we know, we realize that the highest risk in nuclear industry or in nuclear safety is missing knowledge. So that's why we dedicate a lot of money and a lot of energy for knowledge management issues. Regarding types of knowledge, uh, I'm not going to explain what is the difference between the tacit and explicit knowledge. I just want to let you know that every business uh, in any company or any country uh, must know what, why, how and who. And it doesn't matter if you split the atom or if you produce, for example, chocolates. The basic is really the same. And I will dedicate uh, during my short contribution uh, my time to be focused, especially on this area, because knowledge management is about people. This is just uh, for your kind information, a strategic model which is very similar in our company. Uh, I do realize that uh, the quality uh, is not 100%, so let me go through very quickly. Uh, this model is about incorporation or integration of knowledge management with uh, company's strategy. Uh, believe me, uh, it is very important because if it is not, uh, somehow connected with corporate strategy. Uh, the, the knowledge management is isolate, isolated island and it doesn't have any support. So this is very important for the very, very beginning. In this circle, you can see uh, the creation of knowledge, which sometimes came uh, in training and then after uh, knowledge management again and uh, processes, products, and performance connected with uh, knowledge, uh, with a strategy of the company. And it's quite important, uh, this uh, contribution to knowledge management and determination of processes to knowledge acquisition and dissemination. So the strateg uh, strategic model in chess company uh, is very similar and uh, more or less works. And now a few words about uh, the process status. Maybe you are surprised that I'm still talking about process because you could admit knowledge management is a system, it's a program or it's whatever. But in our company, it is a process with all its inputs, actions, and outputs. And because it is a process, it is also uh, somehow connected with our processi processes uh, within the company, I mean business processes. So now a few words about our reasons why did we decide to implement knowledge management. 
so of course the main uh, objective of knowledge management uh, introduction uh, was to reduce the risk uh, associate, associated with a possible loss of unique knowledge. While I'm talking about knowledge management in our company, it is defined that uh, has to uh, preserve the unique knowledge. At this moment, we are redesigning the process and we talk about critical knowledge. So this is really different and a little bit different approach. So the reasons why, why we decided to uh, implement knowledge management was of course uh, the risk of loss of the unique knowledge and experience in our Dukovani MPP because of uh, generational uh, change. You know, uh, the people who started immediately after you, um, receiving the PhDs in universities, they started the work in the plant and they spent all life within the plant. We have almost zero turnover uh, in nuclear business. Another reason was increasing demand from abroad for skilled professionals. So it was really kind of alert for us to preserve at least their knowledge within the company. Uh, the experts transition from the operational business, increasing demands on the quality of work. And what happens uh, also in our company that the good employees and um, experts in nuclear business are somehow headhunted, I would say, to another, to another department, not outside of the group, but to another department, which, which is always risk of loss. Uh, development of NPPs, a limited transfer of knowledge and experience, a rapid increase of capacity, and uh, we have realized that experience is not used of the improvement of the processes. So those are the reasons why we decided. Uh, the objectives you already know because I have mentioned those objectives during my uh, first presentation about KPIs on Wednesday. So just to go quickly, and it's common because uh, from Monday till today we still hear more or less the same to identify, maintain, develop, use, share, etc., uh, etc. Et so. We can probably go ahead. Uh, I have been talking also about our main uh, six dimensions uh, for knowledge management. Uh, I'm not going to repeat them anymore. It's just uh, quickly, uh, we could say that some of them are hard and some of them are uh, soft. So what we understand uh, hard dimensions is content and structure, like map knowledge areas, experience reports and documentation. <laughs> Of course, process and organization, because it is very important to put the roles. Everybody involved in knowledge management within the company must understand the role and competencies. Then it is technology and infrastructure. It means uh, databases or searching machines, uh, knowledge management portals, whatever. And uh, among the soft dimensions belong, of course, cooperation and culture. It is nice to say you should have a KM culture or sharing culture, but you probably will agree with me how difficult it is to change the culture within the company, to convince the people how good is sharing, how good is to cooperate. Uh, so it looks simple, but it's not in reality. <coughs> Uh, of course, persuasion and leadership. Um, I talk with my colleagues and lecturers during those days we spent here together, and we really agree that the leadership is, a, is really a kind of issue in knowledge management because uh, the leaders, they think they do knowledge management and they think they support knowledge management, but in reality, it doesn't work uh, properly. On the other hand, while you decide with knowledge management implementation, you should have strong managerial support. Without managerial support, you will not move forward in a single inch. It's impossible. And of course, impact and resilience. Uh, in this, uh, let's say, diagram is visible how it works together. And as I mentioned on Wednesday, if any single element of those is missing, it's always a problem for knowledge management implementation. 
uh, now we are approaching to uh, the slides about nuclear knowledge uh, loss risk management in our company. So uh, let me share my knowledge and experience uh, what we did in the very beginning, but what is still, uh, let's say, active or vital in our company. The roles. You need to have some resources for knowledge management implementation. And after the implementation, while knowledge management is embedded process, you still need people and resources to continue and to maintain sustainability. So uh, in this slide, you can see the headquarters part. But you don't probably don't have headquarters. You can uh, some roles embed uh, to, to this production, uh, let's say, part. And uh, you see that in headquarters, uh, the highest role is board KM owner. It is really the guy who is the member of board. Maybe it surprises you, but it is very important. Without this support in such a big company, we wouldn't move forward. Uh, this is me. In fact, uh, I am kind of a knowledge officer. We call it in my company knowledge management coordinator, but uh, what is my responsibility to methodically support uh, my knowledge managers in both NPPs to uh, bring them some ideas for knowledge management impl implementation, uh, to support them methodologically, uh, to write all documents and internal legal policies, etc. So maybe after coming home, I will convince uh, my manager or supervisor to call me wisdom officer. You remember? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Uh, so this is uh, NPP. This is basically nuclear power plant. Here is my counterpart, knowledge manager, uh, who is very important, uh, which is very important role because he deals with the, the uh, people involved in knowledge management, with sponsors, and lead experts, and with experts. And uh, he needs also KM administrator, which is the uh, person responsible for databases, updates, and uh, such support for knowledge manager. But knowledge manager is really a key person for me to cooperate, cooperate with. So uh, I would suggest that it is also very important while implement or at the very beginning of every, every pilot project uh, to uh, structure the knowledge areas. Uh, and a good idea, or what was quite successful in our company, uh, was that we divided the processes uh, in three groups, like management processes, key processes, and supporting processes. And of course, we, uh, as the key processes uh, relating to business, it means to nuclear business, are critical and most important for every company or every uh, operator. We started with those ones. It means one a knowledge area is named fuel uh, cycle, operations, maintenance. There is really a lot, a lot of knowledge and modifications. And uh, then we continue with support processes. And currently, we are about to find knowledge management issues and links with uh, management processes. <coughs> So what we did at the very beginning at what we doing still now, until now. Identification of unique knowledge or critical knowledge. So uh, here is an uh, example, how did we do that? It looks maybe a little bit uh, messy, but it's not. <laughs> In the first stage we started, uh, the first stage of uh, implementation, we, we started with identification uh, while initiating interviews with managers, line managers. So we were talking with line managers and asking them, show us where is the critical knowledge. Do you think after knowledge mapping then there is some knowledge missing? Show us the unique knowledge holders. We, I call it personally golden grains or golden seeds sitting in their heads. So who else should know better than your maybe mother and your manager what is inside uh, your experience, what is inside your head. 
and what is your uh, expertise and what is your uh, treasury, uh, I mean professional treasury. So they showed us and we started to create the list of uh, another people in their teams and some other knowledge holders. In the second round, we, ha we had an interviews of those identified, and they again showed us others, not even vertically, but also horizontally. If you know that in maintenance is one guy who is absolutely perfect with, uh, I don't know, in turbine area, uh, it could be also your colleagues. So uh, we created in that time about 200, uh, 200 expert, list, uh, expert at risk list and it was the very base of our future work. In the third stage, we started to priority, to priority uh, setting. It means that on the scale one to five, we were trying to identify uh, the risk of loss of that knowledge. So, of course, if the guy with an experience in, the, in his head is about to be retired very soon, he uh, received number five. Uh, but it shouldn't be only the old uh, employees uh, staying before retirement. We have in Tamilin era one uh, very smart and experienced guy who is about 35 years old and he knows absolutely everything. He can shorten the outage. He can repair whatever you think. He is absolutely kind of ET. And uh, you, w you would probably think, but what kind of risk did you identify? Yes, we did. He likes to uh, drive in very high speeds his motorcycle, more than about 300 kilometers per hour. It is his hobby. And that's why he is in our list of knowledge at risk, also marked with number five. <laughs> so, uh, Finally, we got a list and we put uh, the, uh, on scale one to five uh, the high, uh, high of risk. We uh, have to prepare some action plans what to do afterwards. So it is again, it is the list I have mentioned before. Now it is in SharePoint and everything goes through workflow. It means while your manager is sitting with you during let's say appraisals twice per year, uh, he can uh, evaluate uh, your uh, knowledge at risk continuously all years round. He can uh, set uh, priorities regarding, regarding the risk of loss. And it workflow flows through knowledge manager to SharePoint. I showed you uh, during my first presentation that you, have, you can, uh, by full text, find the proper people you need to talk with. The process model is simple and you know it already. In the beginning, you have to identify who and what. Then you have to realize which knowledge management uh, tool you will use for capturing and uh, preservation of the knowledge. I'm sorry, but we don't have time uh, to uh, talk in detail regarding those uh, um, tools because the briefing deserves maybe one separate presentation. It's a long process which requires uh, preparation and people around and quite uh, some money, of, of course. And we use the briefing interviews uh, only for people with a tacit knowledge. You remember, uh, you remember the presentation with a uh, horses trainer in Monday? So uh, you probably will agree with me that in every department or NPP you can find so-called horses trainer, the, the people who just, for example, enter the turbine uh, room and just by using their sense, they know that th something is wrong. Just like, you know. So uh, we believe we have tools f even to, <laughs> to preserve such kind of knowledge and experience. And in the third phase, uh, it is, of course, publication or sharing and using. As I mentioned already, we have quite problems uh, with, the, with the use of uh, those portals and databases and uh, documents. Uh, we have still to motivate to people, the people to, to go there and to search for the problems. It's because uh, nuclear business in, uh, in our company, they are 
just working under some standards and descriptions and checklists. They are, you know, it's almost military environment. So if there is something new, which, is, uh, which doesn't go align with their everyday working procedures, you have to communicate and convince that it is really good for them. It's basically the same. The person with golden grains in their head. And now more tools. We are, we, while talking about knowledge management, uh, we also use, and we don't even realize that we do, uh, even in HR processes, uh, supporting uh, knowledge management uh, principles. It's training, tutoring, mentoring, succession planning. We heard a lot about succession planning already from my colleagues. Exit interviews, and of course, onboarding process, which is missing here, unfortunately. Onboarding is also nothing else, just knowledge management. And maybe you don't realize that what we, what we are doing here it is also sharing the knowledge and experience, not just from lecture to you, but also between lectures during the coffee breaks, etc. It's all about knowledge exchange. Communities of practice, another topic for another separate presentation. Alumni programs. We never heard about that. It's for our employees, I mean ex experts already retired. And it, uh, it's quite simple. Time to time we organize the meetings, just uh, informal meetings where they talk about their knowledge and drinking beer and you know. <laughs> Here is just one example, according to my point of view, um, very nice example how the knowledge from one hat can be transferred to maybe hundreds. Uh, it means that uh, an expert experience, which is transferred to, let's say, experience report, one of our knowledge management tools, uh, goes to database. And our lecturers from training and development department, they visit the database twice per year. It is obligatory for them, and it is in our procedures just as a, uh, as a, as a must. And they, they just uh, read all those experience reports, and they pick up the topics uh, suitable for extension, uh, extension of their curriculas. So, once it comes to their textbooks, uh, they can teach hundreds and hundreds of uh, employees during, during our uh, training processes. Priorities. Support and motivation, they are, it is very important. Management support, as I already said. Uh, capacity, it means not only uh, human resources capacity, but you need uh, maybe financial capacities, at least during the pilot project. And uh, our objectives is in 2017, I'm sorry there is a mistake, uh, as I said, we thought actually that our knowledge management process works properly and then the outputs are more or less, uh, let's say, good for for improving the performance of, of our company. And we also uh, have been, a we got a recognition from the agency IEA in 2013 as a good practice. But now, and it happens in big companies, if it work, if something is really well working, the management decides that you have to redesign it. So, <laughs> so now we are under redesign. So the first big thing is that we are not talking about unique, unique knowledge anymore. We're talking about critical knowledge, which really changes approach a little bit, but not the process as the, as the method. And also we are uh, increasing the uh, team. I mean, uh, regarding uh, the number of uh, employees uh, somehow involved in knowledge management process. And of course, and it is very important and quite expensive, we are trying to uh, introduce a new searching uh, machines and new applications like SharePoint for knowledge management purposes. And uh, on Wednesday, I showed you how it looks, if you remember. This is my dream slide. 
uh, why dream slide? Because it is uh, about uh, knowledge management principles uh, becoming to everyday work of all employees in our company. Uh, our motto of knowledge management is we value employees' knowledge and we know how to treat them. And this is the end of my story. Thank you for your attention.